I want to speak today about hearing the enemy's voice. Um, usually it can come when we're feeling rejected by somebody, um, when they've uh, said things to us that we don't like. Um, I know for me personally, I had dealt with that so many times, you know, uh, the way people acted toward me, um, potentially rejecting things that they have said, me growing up around, you know, just feeling rejected, other people accepted, and usually me being left out. Um, now, the enemy knows where our triggers are. He knows the areas that we've been hurt. And if he can get those areas touched on, then he has done his job. Now, no doubt, many people of the world, you know, they uh, they follow the enemy's voice at all times, as if it's, you know, something that they have to do. And now, we're, we're all born into this world innocent. We all know that. Uh, we don't know anything about hurt when we're infants. You know, our parents you know, did the best in loving us, taking care of us. But the sad fact is, is that when kids get to a certain age, not only do they learn about discrimination, but they learn about rejection. They are hurt by other people, by, you know, things that are said to them. So they see through a little hole of their hurt. And through that tiny hole that they see through, they're seeing out of rejection or any other thing that has affected them in their lives. Uh, for me personally, I don't know where my rejection was rooted out of. I don't know when it began, but I do recall being left out of things in my past. Like, um, I know when my sister got married, um, everyone else was introduced at the beginning of her wedding, the wedding party. I was part of the wedding party. Everyone was announced but me. So, you know, maybe that started it. I don't know. But I know that also when I was younger, I wanted to hang out with my sister. And being that we were seven years apart, I mean, I can understand you don't want your little brother with you all the time. But, you know, I can only remember a few, um, through a couple of circumstances where, you know, she let me hang out with her. And to me, I thought that was the biggest thing. You know, I loved hanging out with my sister. But I know when she had friends over, I would get upset because she wouldn't let me hang out with her. So I reacted, you know, from that. I won't say what I did, but um, it wasn't cool. But, you know, we all are born into this world, you know, innocent, like I said. But then we experience hurt, we experience abuse. And so, like I said, through that tiny hole that we see out of, um, that is our perception of things, is what I am guessing. Um, it's so very hard as a Christian to walk in the opposite spirit of that. You know, when we're experiencing rejection or what it, something that is potentially rejecting, it is very hard to walk in in the opposite spirit, like, like Jesus said, love your enemies. That's something that this world doesn't do. If anything, they react, you know, to those that hurt them. And, uh, this video is slow the way it looks like. So I'm going to be looking, you know, everywhere else, but the camera. Um, so just, you know, listen to my voice because it's, you know, the, the, the slowness of the video is throwing me off. Um, so, like I said, people look through a little tiny knot hole of their pain. As it said in, you know, Papa said in the shack. 
So that is our perception. But as Christians, we have the choice of either walking in our hurts or walking, you know, uh, through healing. And it takes, you know, spending time with God and allowing him to heal those areas of our hearts. It's very important that if you haven't forgiven those that have hurt you, that you you want to forgive them. Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. So, like I said, you have a choice of either walking in the pain or you can walk in healing. Not reacting out of the flesh, but, you know, responding by the Spirit's way of doing things. So, you know, I, I recall in my past, you know, like I said, I had faced a lot of rejection. Um, that it, that experience was, you know, growing up and, you know, being left out of, you know, certain things. And even as Christians, we still deal with um, rejection. And, but the choice is, do we still walk in that or are we going to walk in the opposite way? Now. I back in 2007 I recall um receiving an email from some friends saying hey come to such and such party which was on the same day as me and so after reading that I felt rejection I was like well don't they know it's my birthday that day too so I was reacting out of the flesh. I was reacting out of that tiny knot hole of pain, out of what I perceived as rejection. Like, you know, I'm not accepted. Everyone else is accepted but me. So it's amazing how the enemy speaks when we're feeling low. He says, no one loves you. No one cares about you. You know, you... They're not your friends. They don't care about you. And so if we start believing what the enemy is saying, then the the rejection is going to become even more, um, more hard to deal with because you're believing the enemy's lie. And instead of believing the lie, you could say, you know, Satan, I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus. This is not the way it's you know, things are. These are not who my friends are. <clears throat> and, you know, that's walking in the spirit, you know, telling the enemy to leave and, you know, not following hurtful perceptions that we have and that we've been carrying our, our entire lives. But instead of doing that, I was believing the enemy's lies. And the more I believed, the more hurt I became. So I reasoned in, in my mind, I said, I'm, I'm not going to the party because these people are rejecting me. And so a, a, a sister in the faith, you know, she, uh, she more or less told me, you need to go. So I ended up going and I got there and I looked at the cake and it said, my friend's name and it said mine too they didn't forget me you know that they had me in mind it was all planned and I th you know what really bothered me was the fact that they sent an email to my friend saying come to rob's party and she came and i didn't have I was working out of rejection and if I had only seen and through the spirit you know that to put others above myself I would have went to that party for her you know to bless her but I didn't think of doing that I was working out of that tiny knot hole of pain so that that is the example of you know, how we need to walk in the spirit, how we need to tell the enemy to leave. Because if we don't, we're going to believe the lie and we're going to feel worse. How many Christians do that today? 
instead of telling the enemy to leave, they just believe whatever he says. How many Christians respond out of the flesh rather than in love? You know, so many Christians get so wrapped up in what this world has and what it has to offer that they don't even bother, you know, doing what God wants them to do. They don't bother loving like God wants them to love. Now, I'm not saying that's all Christians. I'm saying that is some. So let us be those that put others before ourselves. Let us be those that hear God's voice. If we can hear God's voice, then it can counter what the enemy is saying. And also, once we hear his voice, we won't have time to listen to the enemy. We'll recognize the enemy's voice when he speaks. So um, check out my past videos. I have um, a couple of videos about hearing God's voice and how you can do so. And if you haven't heard his voice, I definitely recommend it. And it's not something that is far-fetched. It's not something that is crazy and impossible. We can hear God's voice, and you may have heard it many times in your life. So, you know, you, you have to break out of that that mold that a lot of, you know, people think that, you know, you it's impossible to hear God's voice and you can't do so. You can hear his voice. Jesus said, I believe in Matthew, uh, not Matthew, John chapter 13, my sheep hear my voice. So if Jesus said that, then we can hear his voice. And I have heard God's voice many times in my life. And the things that he has said has come true. So uh, I definitely recommend you to uh, take time, hear him, check out my two videos about hearing God's voice. And, uh, you know, God had given me some good tips on doing so. So I pray this video has helped you and I pray it has blessed you. And uh, allow me to pray for you. Dear Lord, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I ask that you would help them to overcome the hurt that has been in their lives, the, the things that they have learned from their hurt, and acting in ways that um, you don't want them to. So, Lord, help them to respond in the Spirit and in love. Help them to walk in the opposite spirit as when you said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You said that because you operated in that. Help us to do so as well, Lord. I pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned.